there's a story I feel like the Lord's been wanting me to tell y'all for a little bit. Um, I didn't always follow the Lord like I do now. And I used to be into some pretty bad stuff, and I used to run around with some pretty bad people. And, uh, uh, shortly after I got saved, I was sitting in church, and uh, the preacher was preaching about, I don't even know what now, but uh, I skipped ahead a little bit in the Bible part in Matthew where Jesus says, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and go away, or it's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have your whole body cast into hell. And similarly, he says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it's better for you to enter life with one hand than to have your whole body cast into hell. Now, um, right then, that was the first time I ever heard the voice of God speak to me. He said to me in very clear terms that I needed to quit all the stuff that I was doing and I needed to quit the people that went with me. Now, I argued about it. I said that, you know, it's not in the Bible. It doesn't say you can't do that. There's nothing wrong with the stuff that I'm doing. But in the end, he's God and I'm not. And so I just ended up saying, okay, well, if this is what you want, you give me the power to do it, and I'll do it. And I did. I put all that stuff right then and there. And, you know, sometimes when God tells you to do stuff, in my experience, he doesn't feel like he needs to give you a reason. He doesn't tell you why. Uh, but this time he did. So, uh, many years down the road, I was out having a party at the lake with uh, about 60 other people. Uh, we were having a good time, and um, one of my friends was out there, and uh, she was with us having a good time too. And uh, she kept telling us how she didn't really want to go home that night. And uh, so I had told her and, and a few other people, just come and stay at my house, I'll be all right. And um, back then, people stayed at my house all the time. Now, that wouldn't have been the least bit unusual. But she ended up saying no, and uh, we went home that night, and the next morning I was up uh, painting my house, and my other friend comes over, and he tells me that my first friend had, had died, and you know, I thought he was messing with me at first, but he said, no, really, she was stabbed to death this morning, and as it turns out, uh, just a few hours after uh, we had all left, uh, she had gone home, and her used to be a drug dealer, uh, came over and decided it'd be a good idea to stab her to death, just like that. Anyways, um, it, it took everybody by surprise, and I was in shock for at least two or three days. I was kind of in this funk. I didn't really know what to think. I didn't know what to feel. I didn't understand why this happened. I didn't understand why God would let this go on or why... Uh, he wouldn't warn us why he, he didn't why he didn't tell us that this kind of thing could happen. And uh, anyway, I, I had been doing a Bible study with a guy sometime prior about that part of Proverbs where it talks about if uh, you run around with bad people, then the consequences that happen to them can come upon you also. And uh, <clears throat> at any rate, I, I was driving in the truck going down the highway. And, there was some songs playing, and um, one thing I've always thought was amazing about God is that how He's so big and so wise that He can use literally anything to communicate something to somebody. And um, there was a there was a Lincoln Park CD playing, and there was a song on that uh, I hadn't really listened to before because it was a little too hip hop to my taste. But uh, again, I was still kind of in shock and a little bit dazed about everything that went on. And uh, I wasn't really paying attention to what was happening. Um, but I was sitting there, I was asking my questions. I was asking God, you know, why didn't you warn us? Why didn't you tell us about this? Something. And uh, I had a glass sitting in my cup, a spoon sticking in it. And uh, all of a sudden, the spoon started to vibrate. And it started to slowly rotate its way around the rim of the glass as if it was pointing to something uh, as I drove past it. Uh, I looked and I 
I never did see anything in particular, but uh, as soon as it had made a 180 degree turn, the chorus of this particular song came on and it said, I tried to give you warning, but everyone ignores me. I called to you so clearly, but you don't want to hear me. I told you everything loud and clear, but nobody is listening. Right then and there, it's like God connected all the dots for me. The lyrics of the song, the Bible study I've been doing, what happened to my friend, the questions I've been asking about it, and the things that God had told me to quit doing when I argued and argued but finally gave in all those years ago. He did warn us. He did tell us. It's all right there in the Bible. All the commands of God that he gives us, they're, they're not there to keep us from having fun or because he's a giant cosmic buzzkill. It's because he knows the world we live in. He knows the people that we have to live with. And all the stuff that he says to do or to not do is for our good, for our benefit because he loves us and he cares about us. So the moral of this story is let's stop listening to the television and the media and letting those things run our lives. And instead, let's start taking care of each other, looking after one another. Because we have a Father in Heaven who loves us and is waiting for us to come back to him. Right here, right now.